Projects and milestones, keeping projects on track with GitLab. Uh, presented by me, my name is Albert Hughes. I'm currently a technical project manager at Lullaby, where I'm managing a large-scale Drupal project with multiple front-end developers, multiple back-end developers, both internal and external with our client. Um, I've been uh, doing project management and working with the web for about 15 years. I started uh, in the mid-90s, I started learning about, well, mid-90s, I learned about the internet through AOL, um, AOL 2.0, started learning that. Uh, by 2000, I had taught myself HTML, built my first website, and then in 2006 or seven. I started to learn about CMS systems, learned about WordPress, got into Drupal um, 2007, 2008, and then got my first professional job in the web in 2008 at a company called Shipple, where I, I'm on my first foray into project management. Uh, today, what I'm not doing is selling you on GitLab. This session is not about why GitLab is the best PM tool or anything like that. It's just really to um, kind of show some of my experience that I've had with GitLab. We're going to talk about what GitLab is, um, how it's different from some of the other project management tools you may be familiar with or used on projects. Um, we'll talk about some of the features and functionality of GitLab and we'll get familiar with it. And then we'll look at some real world use cases. I'll talk about how I'm using it, how some people out in the world are using it, and we'll go from there. Pretty, this is this is my first time doing this particular session, so feel free if you have questions. It's, it's not super formal. Um, if you want me to stop, slow down, ask a question, anything like that, feel free to do so. GitLab. What is GitLab? I had the same question. I actually started the project I'm on right now last June. What well, last July? And. Um, Previously before that, I'd been working at different jobs and I know I was getting back into, into a full-time project manager role and I was kind of gearing up to use to a, like Jira possibly. Um, and then on the first day of the project, our, our, um, the person over DevOps, DevOps on our project said, hey, let's use GitLab. So naturally I had to find out what is GitLab. If you go to get, GitLab, uh, about.gitlab.com, they tout themselves as the DevOps platform. Um, and a, what it is is a platform that they say allows you to do the 10 steps in the development life cycle, manage, which they're looking at from a high level of in entire project programs, the planning piece, which is pretty much where I stay in in the project management side, creating is developing, um, verifying the information, packaging it up, getting it hosted, secured, releasing out software. The main thing I've seen with people who use GitLab have been really like software packages, things that have um, continuous integration, continuous development, things where um, not just typical websites where I build the website, hand it off, and I'm done with it, but uh, software. So a lot of companies use it, um, you can see here. Uh, again, that development life cycle. So a full DevOps platform that allows you to do everything in one interface, project management, code, um, deployment, security, um, that whole thing. GitLab started in 2011 as an open source collaboration tool for programmers. And by 2021, they had an IPO and are now publicly traded on NASDAQ, on NASDAQ um, which was very interesting to me. They have a free tier. So they have three tiers of pricing. Um, free, premium, and ultimate, uh, which was the free tier you can get on as an individual, um, unlimited uh, projects, unlimited repositories. Uh, the premium, a little bit more features, $19 per user per month, and then the ultimate, $99 per user per month. Uh, many company, uh, they have two ways you can get GitLab for SaaS or you can self-manage your GitLab instance. I'm using the GitLab SaaS model. Uh, different organizations and companies are using GitLab. Uh, Goldman Sachs, Fanatics, Ticketmaster, they're using it to manage like the releases of their mobile apps. So a lot of mobile app development. Um, continuous integration was a big seller for a lot of them. Drupal, when I read, going into more of a modern way to contribute code in one place, um, I see they, they moved over to GitLab. Um, 
So those are the companies that are using using GitLab. Um, how is GitLab different from some of the other project management tools that you may be familiar with or use? Uh, right here, this is me at the first at that first job I was telling you about, uh, Shipple. We had uh, in-house CMS, so it was pretty much waterfall-style projects where there was a set price, set features that they were going to have, and a set time. So at that time, um, my project management tools there, we had an in-house task management system, and then we really had a printed out checklist to say, did you go to the kickoff? Did the client pick a template? What Did, you, did they check off the features that they want? Did they add content? Did we QA? Let's go live. And so a lot of the project management with that type of project was just a straight down checklist. Not a lot of collaboration was needed. So that tool kind of worked until we start trying to dip our toe into selling Drupal projects. And then we start doing more things where the actual scope wasn't as defined. So having a checklist didn't work very well. So we started, I started hearing about different tools and um, start think, hearing about Agile at this time and, and Kanban boards and different things to manage a more moving project. And that's when I start hearing about um, tools like uh, at the time, it was really Basecamp, Assembler, um, Unfuddle. And then, of course, as time went on, these type of tools were, we looked at GitLab, GitHub and then start getting introduced to the Alaskan Suite with Jira and things of that nature. Um, these, these were better for these type of projects. Uh, one way, the thing about with a GitHub, it was really focused on code from when I seen it didn't have the same tools uh, for the project manager I think now they've kind of caught up a little bit more they have uh, the GitLab issues you can have um, set some of the similar things list boards of your issues so as a project manager I can add uh, tickets or ha have things and manage my project in a place like GitHub one thing about um, I think the biggest comparable to GitLab is probably the full Atlassian suite so if you have Jira Bitbucket, Confluence, but the, the issue with that or the, the difference with GitLab is even though they're in the same suite, they're still different uh, platforms. So I, I've run into things where you have to worry about, oh, do they have permissions in Jira and Bitbucket or somebody tags something in Confluence and then you click a link and then you don't have permissions. So a difference with GitLab, it being one inclusive platform you can set permissions for certain levels and then you know they have access to the code repository, they have access to issues, they have access to the wiki, they have all of that in one place. You don't have to worry about different accounts, different licenses, it's all um, right there. So a lot of similarities, um, especially with Jira, I mean, a lot of the project management tools we use are very similar, um, but the, the, the key, I think, the difference from these are um, in one place. I also, so like, Assembler seemed like um, they were a little bit more for, it's like, a, one was out, a little bit outdated or a little bit more for security, so it was a little bit different from GitLab. Um, another place that I've, um, in my career, I've worked in internal marketing departments a lot. Um, and in these internal marketing departments, they usually have project management tools that are really optimized for marketing campaigns or they're doing a social campaign or something that's bigger than the development project. So I'll run into issues where, hey, it's cool in the, um, we get something in from the marketing department and we use a tool like Rike or Sun or Trello to actually see the issues but when we, once we get into the development and I'm dealing with developers, we're typically jumping out of this and then managing things back in Jira or some other developer focused tool. Um, so some of the workflows in like a write, I get a write request, then I have to assign it to a developer in another platform like a, in, in our in-house Jira, then they do something in Bitbucket they have a question and I have to go back to the chain and now I'm dealing with, as a project manager, three or four different softwares, three or four different communication streams that I have to consolidate. And with, Git, with GitLab, I'm able to do all of that in one platform. So I don't need to sign out, I don't have to go over here and move this to another, another project. Um, the value that I've seen in GitLab is everything is in that one place. Um, and so yeah, from Write, Asana, Trello, 
monday.com, Podio. Uh, again, especially Podio and monday.com really to me was very focused on the marketing campaign versus if I'm doing a, let's say a web project for this marketing campaign, it's harder for me to manage that web project in the same tool that the campaign is being managed in. So those are some differences I've seen there. Um, again, uh, let me get right here. this just shows you a map of Git, GitLab. And, and basically what they're saying is all of those platforms you see down there, you can do in GitLab. Um, and that's, to me, that that's the biggest difference. Um, of course, it has some pros and cons. I think in GitHub, there was the ability to like put all my list on a different style table. There was a, a few nuances that I'm like, okay, I like that, that's cool. But the, the thing I think sets GitLab apart is just that one platform. Um, that was just, just, just a big piece. Um, so going through, let's take a look at features and functionality for uh, GitLab. Just talk about some terms real quick so that we can kind of level set as we go through the next slides. Groups in GitLab is like the high level of the organization. So if you create an account from your company, you structure everything under your groups. And then projects are, every project has, is, is basically representing a repository. So every code repository you have is a project. And then inside of that project, you can have associated issues, um, all of the things related to that project. Issues are the base level, so anytime you have a request, a task, everything in GitLab starts with an issue. And then issues can also be promoted to an epic. And the epics are, um, and here is just a grouping of issues, so a way that you can group a bucket of issues. Uh, maybe that's a feature, maybe that's a user story, um, but epics. And then milestones are a method in GitLab that allow you to time box issues. So some people use them for sprints, you can use it for an initiative, but start, end date, and then you can have issues associated uh, under those milestones. Iterations, um, similar, very similar to milestones, another way to time box um, work that you need to do. Labels, powerful feature in GitLab that allows you to label, create custom labels and categorize work. Boards, which allow you to, let's Kanban boards, Scrum boards, things that we've seen, and then roadmaps. So we'll take a look at that. Look at again here, it's just a diagram of how it's broken down in GitLab. You have the group, groups can also have subgroups. And then under a subgroup, you can have projects. You can have a project associated directly with the group. Under projects, you see the issues, and then users in GitLab are called members. And so, with each issue, you can assign a member to an issue. You can uh, members can participate in the issue, and then members can comment on a particular issue. Taking a look at uh, how the epic is broke down, uh, epics are at the group level. So, a individual project. You can't have an epic for this project. The epic would be at the group level. And the reason being is because then you can have, if I'm an organization, I put out an epic, it may be across multiple projects. So um, this is an example where you can have one epic and then you have two issues from one project and an issue from another project all under that particular um, epic. Looking here, this is the group screen. So this is a organization I created called Houston Hoopers. You can see from a group screen, I get access to see my projects under this group. Then from the group, you can see all the issues within the group. Uh, merge request, that's a term in, uh, in, in GitLab. You can see all the merge requests that are related to issues within this group. And then you can get your other um, security packaging, hosting, and different settings for your group there. Uh, looking at a project screen, so now from that group page, I, I uh, drill down into my iOS app project. You'll have the code repository here, and then the thing I've, I've used as a project manager, uh, I can actually just you know make an edit from the, from the project screen right here. Like say, for instance, there's a menu link with uh, a misspelling in it. 
I can go edit in the repository and then commit from there. It'll, you know, do a, basically I can edit code from right here from the interface with the lab as a project manager. So sometimes I do that. Uh, but you can get different project information here. And then these are the issues related to this specific project. So again, you can see all the issues from a group, from the group screen. And then you can get the issues specific to this project here. Uh, I use the merge request, so, so one thing, and I, I didn't go into too detail in the merge request, but from an issue, and I, let me go over here, look at it on the screen. May not be able to see, but from this issue, once you create an issue, you can create a merge request related to the issue. Um, so I spend my time going back, looking at that, seeing what work's been done. Um, on the regular issue, you have title, um, with GitLab, they have a bunch of stuff like these templates that you can create right in the in the repository, um, where I could have like a description template, where I could put like a little skeleton of, of what every description should be, um, a title description and a uh, a title template and a uh, description template. In the description, they have stuff where you can make these checklists uh, to dos within your uh, body. It's regular markdown. You can assign to people. Add the epic, put what milestone, and add your labels all in there from the issues. Uh, all right, just taking a look at the epic. Um, I use epics a lot too, um, but again, description you can add all it like from here, you can add issues. Which, what I've seen in the current version we have. If I create, if I want a child epic under my epic, I need to make an issue under the epic and then promote that epic, promote that issue, and then it'll create the child epic. I know they have some, um, it's a tier thing. Some, I think their highest tier, you can actually say plus and add an epic, but I think in the premium tier, you have to have the issue under the epic, then promote that issue in order for you to create a child epic that makes sense um, so we do that from here you can also see like um, different information about your epic we'll go look at that real quick again I talked about time boxing milestones I use them heavy um, again some people we'll, I'll talk a little bit more but some people use them for sprints some people use them for like we're doing a fall initiative or some type of campaign or maybe you're launching a specific product um, are you doing releases? That's where milestones come in. Milestones also have a milestone page where you can see all of the issues associated with that milestone, as well as a burn down and a burn up chart uh, on the milestones page. Uh, iteration is very similar. I'll talk some of the difference. Iterations in in GitLab are very similar to milestones, except milestones track issues and merge requests. For that, for that particular, um, those particular dates, where iterations you can only see um, issues. Uh, taking a look at labels, labels are powerful. So labels can be put on issues, merge requests, or epics. Um, you can have scoped labels, or you can create regular labels um, at both the group and issue label. A, a, a nuance that I've seen a lot in GitLab, you can promote things from the project level to the group level. So if I created a label within one of my projects, if later I'm like, oh, that's a great label, but it should be also used for another project, I can promote the label and now it'll be available for the entire group. So any projects under my group can inherit a particular label. Um, again, I can also assign if I want it to be on issues or issues and merge requests. Once you have those labels, they allow you to actually customize your boards. So in the la labels plus boards is where the power really comes in GitLab. So I can have multiple boards, as many as I want actually for issues or epics. And then for each list, I can use, um, I can scope that, I can filter that list by particular labels. So if any of the custom labels I created or some of the labels that they already have like open or closed, um, and then I can filter those. I can filter by a person, a label, things of that nature. So it's, it's boards. I spend a lot of time there. Uh, and then, do you find the labels get kind of overused? 
you definitely want to have some type of so at the beginning of the project we try to have a like let's have a label meeting let's decide what labels we want to use at this time for the project i think they I've tried to keep them from being like everybody can just create a bunch of labels. So we tried to have some type of label structure in a sense so that they don't get overused, if that makes sense. Yeah, because it seems like they could be a label for whether it's open or not, but it could also be, you know, really the front end. Really. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm in, in two slides. We're gonna we're gonna dive deeper. I'll show you. I'll tell you exactly how I'm using them. Uh, okay. I'm actually I'm like one example while we're here is. You can have labels like front end, back end, DevOps. These are the type of work. Um, you can have a label that may be scope that says, like, I'm using some for, in our merge request, we have uh, developer scope needs review, developer in review, uh, QA needs QA, QA needs review. So we'll try to use for, like, in merge requests, like the status of the review on particular issues. I, I group them by the work. Um, maybe with QA also they have like scope bug tickets so like bug and then scoped what type of bug is it accessibility is it some type of thing so we've we tried to have like a um, upfront discussion of like let's let's create this uh, kind of some governance around our labels in a sense uh, they can't I, I have in just doing my research and looking across different projects the this board right the actual boards, too many labels can make these these boards look a little bit busy for sure. Um, so I've, I've personally on my project not tried to, over, I, I didn't go over, I tried not to go overboard with labels. I tried to keep it pretty simple. Um, can they be uh, here? Can you have like labels and sub-labels? You can have labels and sub-labels, um, but it's really, you would do that as a scoped label similar to, um, you would do them like this. So you would have a scope of like this is CSA C stat priority and then priority one two three. So um, you could scope them with two columns. It's just I mean like uh, two colons whenever you create them. Uh, but that's that's what I would think would be like a label sub level, and then you can have priority on them as well of how they show up in order. But I wouldn't instead of sub label, I would do scope label. The, yeah, I would do scope label if that makes sense. Another feature I use, um, I've used pretty heavy, is roadmaps. So out of the box, here are epics that were created. This timeline there are the phases. So phases and epics aren't related until you get to roadmaps where you can see it. So basically saying these are all the epics I have. This is the timeline on those epics. And then this is where they meet within that particular phase. So from here, these are all my epics. We're going to be doing this epic between these two releases. Um, same thing here. This particular epic over two releases. Um, and then so you can get dates, what phase is going to be in, and then also see the epics in one screen. I use this as a PM um, in talking to my use case. is like after my first SOW, the next SOW was coming up, uh, like we was creating a scope of work. So our business development, they wanted to, kind of, hey, what, what, what kind of work do you see coming up? They wanted, they were gonna take what I said and create this, but I was like, if I put all the features from that SOW that we wanna do in the next scope of work, if I put all the few features, put some dates, basically I can create the, a Gantt chart for him that he can use in the scope of work. Um, right out of here and then I already have the work in the system planned out So once they sign the SOW, I just come back here and I already have all the features that we outlined in the SOW Already in the system and then could work through if that makes sense uh, So diving in a tad bit more about the uh, about use cases and examples uh, I'm, I'll talk a little bit about the project. I'm on so what we're doing is we're build. We're using D9 to build a platform. So we're building a almost like this is the use case. So a platform where this organization can spin off basically clone sites that can be modified and customized for their members. So they have a current platform right now building Drupal 7. So we're rebuilding that platform, but then that platform 
will be um, so they can use that platform to spin up new sites that have this core set of features that can then be customized. So we build it's more like software that we're building. So they will continue. I think even regular websites now today are becoming more of like there's not just as I build this site. And then we wait five years until it want to rebrand, and then we come back. I think it's everything is continuous now. Uh, whether it's updates, whether it's um, like software updates, whatever it is, it's continuous. So, um, in my in my situation, from as a comparable, the organization name in GitLab, because this is my, the organization we're working with. It's their first time in the GitLab as well. The organization name is the client name, and then we have. Really, three projects that we have under under our on our account right now is the actual platform that we're building. Then we have static, like a help, a static site where we're we're building help docs, and then we have like a D nine, what they're calling a marketing library. So we have three projects, three code repositories that we're working on that are all in the project level of our GitLab. Then uh, for issues, I'm using any ideas that come up. If there's a meeting and there's like a feature that just gets brought up in one of our demo calls or something, I'll add it as an issue. Just even just in, sometimes instead of even writing a note to say, I'll just create the issue right there because I know I could come back. We can start adding. We can collaborate within GitLab for anything that comes up. And then later, if we decide that becomes big and we want to promote that to an epic, we could do that. We want to break it up. We can do that as well. Um, but I'll use that our QA. Any bugs they find, um, anything like that, I start off with the issue level. And then ethics again. There was some. We were unique in our project where we did a a like a, a full dis a really big discovery before the project kicked off that basically drew out like if we replicated your system, it'll be about a year's worth of work. And then so we had we kind of came into it where it's a little it's like we have an outline but we don't know exactly how we want to do that, exactly what we're going to do. Um, but I I started off and I've, I've continued of taking those epics or taking those features that we know we want to build from this platform, creating epics, and then was able to do some project planning using those roadmaps to kind of look at what it would look like for a year. Um, so that's helped me out a lot. And then. I'm using milestones since our SOWs are quarterly. I, I broke up our miles. I broke up the, the SOW into basically three phases a piece. So a month, a phase, or four weeks, I'm treating as a phase. So I'm using milestones to represent basically every four weeks. And so I'll set my my um, that phase, the goals at the milestone level. So what I'll do on the milestone page. Uh, is I will literally put like here are our goals for the milestone and then you could see all of the issues associated with that milestone so I'll, I'll, we'll always come back to that weekly like hey we're in phase 8 right now remember in phase 8 we're, we're focused on the admin dashboard, admin improvements and uh, shipping integration shipping and payment integrations that's our phase 8 goals for and so from knowing that's the phase 8 goals which is a milestone. Then I'll use iterations, which is similar to to basically group my weekly stuff. So we know we have four weeks, so pretty much every phase is also gonna have four iterations. And then in those iterations, same thing, what's our goals for this week? Put them on the iteration page. We can track all the issues from right there. So during um, stand-ups or any meetings, well, I'll just go back to my iterations page to see, hey, what are we at this week? And then labels. I'm using labels for work types. Again, the front end, back end, um, front end, back end, DevOps design. And then MR review statuses are like QA and review. I mean, QA needs review, QA in review, um, developer in needs review, that, that type of thing for all of my uh, merge requests. And then I even use the labels to group the epic types with like this is the type of feature. So there's certain things from that discovery that talked about administration, like admin, different features. I basically put a label on those epics so I can easily get to the epics that are in those even bigger groups of work. And then also I tag those with uh, which SOW they belong to. 
So then with those labels, I can use the boards to kind of use my daily work. So um, if I want to look at planning with business development or account manager, I can go to my Epic page and then like see which, base, create a board that has uh, HSOW as a, as a list. And then basically you can get an outlook of these are, SOW, these are all the epics that we want to do in the next SOW, these in the following. So I can get with the client as well for prioritization there. Uh, and then daily, one thing I did for issues is you can set up a board with all your team members. So, of course, team board, I have a uh, front end, so then, then boards per group. So the front end board, back end board, our team board. So if I meet with somebody individually, I could go to the team board, filter by their name, and we could just prioritize their orders. If I, I mean, their issues. If I meet with the front end developers, I can just go to my front end board and we can collaborate and uh, basically prioritize everything there, same way. So boards are, boards are uh, pretty powerful. And then again, I use roadmaps um, to help out with biz dev and things like that. Uh, cool. Any questions or thoughts or discussion from that? Does that make sense? Is it is any in the project management tools? If I can ask, what what are you, what are you all using right now? Um, if anybody wants to give some insight on what y'all are using. Martians. Okay, I'm familiar. I'm familiar. Because we have a lot of projects that are not Drupal based, not web based at all. Mm -hmm. And everybody has to be able to see status as a specialist stakeholder. What do you think from GitLab? Do you see anything from here that would be applicable to, to the type of projects you're working on? Or be, or would you say from just your outside, if it's not software, it doesn't matter? Like, Well, it's not software. You can't really use GitLab because, well, you can, I guess, but it would be redesigning the wheel and every project manager is also using uh, smartsheets throughout the company. Yeah. They can all see what everybody's doing. You can set up dashboards, which are very similar to the Kanban boards or and the labels, uh, basically they're pegs. Mm -hmm. Biggest thing for me, I always, my, my philosophy in project management is the best tool is the best tool for the project. Yeah, I think I think it's always important. My it's really important that I've seen to like um yeah, a tool that fits, right? Like if it doesn't fit, I'm not trying to fit GitLab fit for this pro I, I think this project has stayed on track and GitLab has helped it stay on track. Mainly because we have, we've had about three front end, three or so back end developers. We had designers, we had an architect, we had a DevOps person. We have a couple developers from the client side. We have their uh, product manager. So we have multiple people that want visibility, that need to contribute. And then we're building a software that needs to continuously be developed on. Uh, and it needs to be secure, and they're doing deployments. Uh, I think it, when that, when you have something like that, I think GitLab can be a great fit. Oh yeah, uh, special, but yeah, I think got projects that are not code based. <laughs> then I don't know. Uh, what uh, what what are y'all using on y'all's project? Um, I have actually one that I'm doing by myself. Mm -hmm. I set it up in Airtable. Okay. Any other tools over here or examples? Jira. Jira? Is there, what are some things that maybe you saw here that like, ah, that does better than anything you've done in Jira or, or any points from that? Um, <laughs> without getting into the brands that I have about Jira. <laughs> <laughs> so the biggest thing that I've been seeing is that the labels here kind of replace a lot of the Jira like, mm. boards and, and um, phases that they set up, uh, they can set up like workflows and whatnot, so you can only move from like in progress to in review or back to you know, each work. Makes sense. Um, That's what I, I've seen some of that, like in, in look, I feel like in Jira they've kind of get, 
this is what you how you need to use it more yeah. than like, hey, we're gonna let you customize it. How you yeah, do it. so definitely the judicious uh, creation of the labels and, and managing of that is going to be like critical to having some success with the like, GitHub. That's pretty clear. The thing that uh, the project managers that I have that I work with that are kind of like, I don't know if we want to go over to GitLab. Is it, I think reporting is an issue that they have. I, I would say, to me, in GitLab, you get a fair amount of reporting out of the box. Um, again, I'm using that milestone page and the iterations page, where it's giving me a percentage of what's open, what's closed at any time I go there. Um, on both, I have the burn up, burn down charts on both. Um, so it's giving me a good high level and, <clears throat> give me one second, I, we'll, we we'll look at the- a lot of uh, custom fields to our as well. Mm. I some of the standard ones like uh, points, and I don't know if this here really Yeah, weights. Yeah, they have weight in GitLab that's similar, I think. Okay. Uh, yeah. Kind of like. Is like level of effort? Uh, yeah, we'll look. I think it's level of effort. Uh, it's like weight. Okay. Mm -hmm. How is GitLab as far as uh, resource management? Uh, give me a give me a example. Well, in other words, uh, your developer is has an eight-hour workday. Hmm. So you have to, you don't want to over, over allocate. It does. One thing, one thing I've seen it do, let me see if I can get out of this mode and actually get into GitLab real quick. Yeah. You're talking story points? Yeah. Definitely have the ability for story points. Let me just pull this, see if I can get I from. I want to get everything to one thing and not having to have, you know, Jira and GitHub and all those things to switch between right. as a developer. Uh, let me see well, if I can you drag. Well, if you have to crash your resources or if you're going to hit your milestone, all the... Yeah, because one thing that, that they'll do, like if you start, if a person has a bunch of uh, assigned, well, we'll get into the ways and get into that. But two, like say for instance, somebody does have a lot of work, like it'll put a little thing, like when you try to assign, it'll be like, this person's busy. Or they'll have li little indicators that say they have too much work. But you can look at... Um, yeah, don't mind to tell me that uh, somebody's over allocated, but at the same time, we only got three people working. <laughs> so, what can I do? It doesn't matter how allocated they are, we still have to get it done. They won't give me anybody else, they won't give me more budget. Let me look, let's look at an issue real quick. And what does GitLab do as far as uh, if you have to change the dates? Like the the start end date, due dates? Yeah, in other date. words, you have your milestone, but it's just not gonna happen, so they're pushing the milestone out. Yeah. Um, so you can't, see, like there's, I don't think there's any any guideline from a project management standpoint where it says I can't move them. It'll, it'll shift everything accordingly, but it won't change. And an epic can be driven by, uh, did I move this? Oh, hold on. I lost my screen. Sorry about that. Uh, I don't want to do that. Sorry about that. I got stuck. I just got uh, between mirroring and project mode. I got a, <laughs> somehow I got thrown out. Sorry about that. Let me get to it right with Sorry, any worries? Ah, uh, no worries, no worries. That was on me. Uh, Uh, this is my test one. Uh, I didn't know. I 
we're in the middle of our project, so I, I wanted to show mine, but I'm like, I don't know. They kind of went a little bit. <laughs> like, oh, the phone. Uh, oh. Other thing that's really cool in there is like um, the ability to tag. You can put like whatever pound and whatever that particular issue is. You can you can easily tag issues, merge requests, epics, people, um, and group those together. You can add from an issue if something if there's another issue that's blocking it. If it's another issue related to it. Um, So you can do dependencies in it? Say that one more time. You can do dependencies? Like, uh, yeah, you can say, like, yes. Yeah, you can say this issue is dependent on the, this other issue being completed. They have little things in the merge request that you can put, like, this closes pound mm -hmm. 222, and then after that's merged, it'll close the issue by itself. Do um, so you put multiple tickets with a single merge request? You can close, yeah, if you put closes pound Ticket one, pound three, it'll close both of them. Sweet. Uh, and you do Gantt charts with it and uh, combine? Yep, Gantt charts, combine. I'm going to make one issue and then we'll look, try to see if I can get one out real quick. Does it do dashboards? Like your own custom, like your own dashboard? Yeah. I think my own dashboard is really like a board, just like a regular board. I don't think you can have a like, Customized dashboard to well, show the dashboards, especially for the stakeholders, so they can look yeah. at a glance, see what the health of the project is, what's on hold. Uh, another what's place I can look real quick is let me go, let me go up a level to see if I can just get to GitLab. Because I found stakeholders don't care about the nitty gritty; they just want to see. That's all they want to see, is that. Uh, exactly. I'm trying to see if I can look at another. What's holding it up? Look at somebody else's project and see if they have anything that would be of interest. Uh, anything, anything, anyone else, any questions or something specific that anybody wanted me to pull up or, or just ask about or talk to? I'm getting close, right? Are you basically done? We're Two, just and asking questions now? Yeah, if you have questions, yeah, for sure. How do you show barriers? Um, give me an example. Something that's stopping a project, or I know you have issues, but which I assume are the same as tasks. Like a blocker? Yeah, like exactly. A, um, what I've done in my board, I've actually, like I ha we had a label blocked, mm -hmm. and then in our board, we'd have like a block column. So you could easily move that. And then if there's an issue, like if there's a dependency, the issue will show up with a red mark, like this issue is being blocked by this other issue. Like so for us, a lot of the stuff is blocked by supply chain. Mm -hmm. so it makes sense. You get the parts you need during this time. Yeah, a lot of, I, for me in project management, if I came up with something, if something was a blocker like that, there would be an issue that I would create to unblock it. And then that issue, basically would be blocking any other issue. Like I, I, would, I would document supply chain is blocking as an issue that I know somebody could work on. And then any supply chain related issues would have blocked by supply chain. And so that if there was any more details of when supply chain was gonna be unblocked or anything like that, we'd have a place to document that. So if I get an issue and then I see it's blocked by supply chain, I can easily click back, go to that supply chain issue and get any of the details, like the latest updates on when that may become unblocked, right? Okay. Um, that's kind of how I've been, I've been managing those. Uh, anything from this side? Did anybody get anything from this? Did I this did. make sense? It's really good. Yeah, it's interesting. Like it cool, cool, cool. That, that's the main thing. You got some iteration reports? Uh, yes. Let me look. Let me see if I can pull up my real quick while we are. I'm just going to give a quick glance. Uh, I'm just gonna log into my 
just to see, like, because I don't think I'm recording anymore.